as you will recall, we started the year in calculus by taking limits. Eventually, limits led to the definition of a function that we call the derivative. The derivative gave us the slope on the graph of that function for every single point. Then we learned lots of techniques to take derivatives. Eventually, we learned applications of those derivatives. What this next unit is all about is working that derivative process backwards. So this lesson assumes that we have already gotten a derivative, and we wanted to work backwards in order to find the function that we originally started with. That is called an antiderivative. So if you take a look at the objective here, we are defining and finding these things called antiderivatives. Let's start by looking at a couple of warm-up questions, as we normally do. So find each of these derivatives. So very straightforward, we have some polynomial equations, a couple of parabolas. We want to find the derivatives of each one of these. It's just going to be a straightforward application of the power rule. Play some leapfrog here. Y prime is equal to this 2 is going to leapfrog down and meet that 1 half and cancel out and just give us x plus, and then the derivative of 3x is just 3, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So yeah, that's it. So there is the derivative. Okay, if I look at number 2, y prime is equal to, well, wait a minute, this is exactly the same. At least this part's the same and just have a different constant here. So it should still be x plus 3. And then that negative 1, its derivative is also 0. Hmm. Okay, so think about this in the context of the lesson that we're talking about. We want to be able to work this process backwards that I have myself a derivative and I want to work backwards in order to find the original function that I started with. Do you see a little bit of a limitation here? What happens is the fact that like this constant right here, when I take its derivative, it's going to be zero. When I take the derivative of negative one, it's also going to be zero. So trying to work backwards, I just lost that piece of information. I can't get it back. Okay, so that's going to be super important for all of this anti-differentiation process. That's what it's called, anti-differentiation. So let's look at one more of these examples. Y prime is equal to X plus three. So what is Y? Hmm, this looks super familiar. So Y is equal to, it's the same exact equation that we just uh, started with. So it's gotta be a half X squared plus three X, but then I don't know what to add to the end of this. So it's plus something. That was my phone ringing. Uh, it was probably spam risk. Anyway, so this something that's in the box there, what is it? Is it negative one? Is it positive one? Or maybe, who knows, maybe it's plus pi. We have no idea. So to summarize all of the possibilities for that constant that's right there, we usually just say plus capital C. And this thing is called the constant of integration. It's called constant of integration, this word integration, because that word is the same thing as anti-differentiation. It's that process of working backwards from a derivative in order to get the original function. And what we just saw is that that process has a limitation. We lose that constant. So what you think about, like, if I change this value of c, what does it do to this function that's right there? Take a look at the objective slide here. There's a picture of basically what's going on here. Our objective being able to define and find these things, these antiderivatives. Well, notice that you have in red here something that looks like a cubic function. And every single one of these has the exact same derivative, which is this green parabola here. Or if I work this thing backwards, if I have this green parabola as my derivative and I want to know what is the function that gave me that derivative, I'm asking what is the antiderivative? And you have an infinite number of them. And that plus C that we just talked about is basically going to make these things just translate up and down in this particular case. And you have an infinite number of these antiderivatives. And to summarize all of them, you just add that little extra constant integration, that plus C.